Estonia is committed to preparing leaders and advancing knowledge for the greater good. On the web at spea.indiana.edu. And McLadry, Audit, Tax, and Consulting Advisors. Effective October 26th, McLadry is changing its name to RSM, and its global network is unifying. RSM, experience the power of being understood. And TIAA CREF, global financial company dedicated to delivering financial outcomes that matter. TIAA CREF, created to serve, built to perform. Learn more at TIAA.org. It's Morning Edition from NPR News. I'm Renee Monte. And I'm Stephen Skeep with the story of China's spreading influence. To follow the story, it helps to have a map of China in your head. You know, its coastline and its seaports face eastward toward the Pacific. China would like to have a seaport facing the other direction toward the Persian Gulf. And now China is getting one. If you head southwest out of China, you reach Pakistan, which is upgrading a port for China on the Arabian Sea. NPR's Philip Reeves traveled to that port. We are bouncing along in a propeller plane. 19,000 feet below us, in a steamy blue haze, lies the Arabian Sea. Our destination used to be an obscure fishing village. It's a place called Guada. Western journalists are rarely allowed to visit Guada. It took NPR months to get permission. plane lands, and we bump along the runway towards Guada's tiny, tumble-down airport. Hi, have a nice day. A reception committee is waiting for us, in the form of the police. Guada's in Pakistan's poorest province, Baluchistan, where separatists are waging a low-level guerrilla war. The police tell us we're forbidden from going anywhere without a police escort. We've no option but to get inside their pickup truck and set off, along with several other trucks carrying black-clad commandos from the anti-terrorism squad. You're not going to get a full picture of a place when you're driving along in an armed police escort, but I'm looking out the window and I can see lots of low, flat-roofed concrete buildings. Uh, there's a lot of sand and there's a lot of dust. Gawada's a peninsula with a big rocky outcrop at the end, shaped like a hammerhead that juts into the sea. This acts as a breakwater for Guada's deep water port. Not far across the water is one of the world's most important sea lanes, the Strait of Hormuz. Huge amounts of oil and container traffic from the Gulf sails past here. A lot goes to China, taking weeks to get there. So here's the plan. It's far quicker to move stuff overland through Guada, up the length of Pakistan to western China. A corridor across Pakistan also gives China a far more direct route to international markets. We really foresee that this area will be developed within the next two or three years as a potential hub for Chinese cargo moving through to Persian Gulf and Arabian Gulf area, India to South Africa, Europe. Muzaffa Koka is an executive from a shipping and cargo handling company. Guada's position on the map gives it great strategic importance, he says. This is a very huge maritime area. It is the key warm water area. This place is, is really a gold mine. China seems to agree. It's pledged to invest $46 billion to help Pakistan develop the corridor. There are plans for power plants, pipelines, road and rail links, and a big international airport in Guada. A Chinese company has taken over operations at Guada's port. In the city's harbour, fishermen in brilliantly decorated wooden boats sail in and unload their catch. A man drags a big swordfish across the quay to the market where it's chopped up. Most of Guada's people still survive by fishing. Most are very poor. There's an acute shortage of fresh water here. For many hours every day, there's no electricity. We've come to see what Guada might look like if Pakistan's dreams come true and it becomes a major maritime hub. Here at the Guada Development Authority, there's a big map showing the city of the future. There are beachside luxury hotels, a revolving restaurant, a marina, and block after block of new homes. 100,000 people live in Guada right now. The map envisages a population 17 times that number. At present, Guada only has one luxury hotel. Today, it has a handful of guests. 
the Wi-Fi is down because insurgents have sabotaged the network. Hussein Wedinet from the Baluchistan National Party has come to the hotel restaurant to meet NPR. Like almost everyone in Guadalajara, ethnically he's Baluch. Wadila explains that after decades of poverty and neglect, Baluch people don't trust Pakistan's government. He says they fear being marginalized by Pakistan's other ethnic groups if Gwada starts booming and people flood in. But Pakistan's blighted by conflict and corruption. And Wadila thinks it'll be a very, very long time before all the grand plans for Gwada become reality, if at all. Certainly, Gwada's port has made a slow start under Chinese management. This is uh, 12 months, 365 days, 24 hour open port. Are you doing a lot of business at the moment? Not at all. Not, not, not. Uh, we are doing very less business uh, because of the uh, lack of infrastructure. Dostain Khan Jamaldini is chairman of the Gwada Port Authority. He says the port's only handling a couple of ships a month right now, but that'll change. There's a reason, he says, he's made 15 trips to China in the last two years. These visits are not just, uh, you know, sightseeing. So these, these visits are serious engagements. We sit together, we discuss, we brainstorm. And this China-Pakistan economic corridor is just not a slogan or a piece of paper. Do so you believe uh, this is going to happen? You believe? Yeah, definitely the level of engagement that I see, it, it, it gives me sure thing. Surety that uh, this is going to happen. Yes, sir. Yes. Jamaldini does have one big caveat. He says ultimately, for that corridor to succeed, there'll need to be peace next door in Afghanistan. Whatever is cooking inside Afghanistan. The first spillover comes to Pakistan. All will depend on the peace in Afghanistan. But the Afghan conflict is getting worse. Peace in this region seems a long way off. That doesn't dampen the optimism of some. The first people to spot a place on the rise are Pakistan's property investors. Wada has caught the eye of Niaz Akhtar, a retired army captain. I believe the interest of China in Gwada is tremendous. Akhtar's flown in to hunt for bargains. He's only been in town a couple of days, but he says he's already reaping rewards. Yes, 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 I've made two deals and I've and uh, uh, tremendous profits. It's very good for them. Philip Reeves, NPR News, Guada. You hear every corner of the world on Morning Edition from NPR News. That couldn't possibly be truer. I'm Pat Finn, and uh, that was quite the report. China and Pakistan. How interesting. Our fall fundraising campaign is right now. And listener support helps keep your favorite programs like Morning Edition and those fabulous reports from, as Steve Inskeep said, all corners of the world on the radio. And we are asking for your contribution right now. The best way to give is to become a sustaining member. It's easy for you and it's certainly easy for us, but it just takes two minutes of your time to set up your ongoing monthly contribution, five, ten, a hundred dollars a month, whatever it is you can contribute. We warmly welcome your one-time contribution if that's the way you'd like to do it, $60, $120, whatever. But go online, kpbs.org, or choose to give us a call, 1-800-576-5727. 1-800-576-KPBS is the phone number to call, or you can join us online at kpbs.org. Pretty easy to do there. You just look for that big Give Now button. And you can become a member that way. We do have a goal this hour. Our goal is to raise $15,000 by 9 o'clock this morning, which is about 22 minutes away. Um, that's the good news because we still have $12,400 to go. That means there's plenty of time for you to become a member this morning at 1-800-576-5727 for you to get your support registered toward that goal. And uh, also uh, for you to know that you're supporting something that you already value. 1-800-576-5727 or kpbs.org uh, to join us online. And if you haven't given yet, Eric, or people out there have not given yet, there is no better time than right now because... 12000 to go. Oh, great. Because we have a special giveaway. It's a VIP package to see Garrison Keillor's farewell tour with the Prairie Home Companion 
which is coming to the San Diego Civic Theater January 23rd. And this VIP package includes 